Welcome to my Multiple Careers podcast. I make videos and now my second podcast on how to build a fulfilling and meaningful career rather than just going with the flow and doing what everyone else does and expects. And in this podcast, I want to help you to break down problems and challenges that you face in your career and share my thoughts. And I will try my best not to be one of those podcasts that just pat you on the back and tell you that everything is going to be fine, but also give you some of the hard truths, knowing that these are often needed to make the best decisions. To give you some background, I wanted to start a podcast to have a platform to talk in more length and in more depth about certain things that seem to be a bit too long and detailed to talk about on my YouTube channel, I mean in my YouTube videos. So I got myself into the habit of listening to podcasts as well, among others a lot of Joe Rogan and also Sam Harris and I really love doing chores or non-thinking tasks I call them like doing the dishes or folding clothes while listening to valuable content so I hope that my podcast multiple careers can also do the same for you for now I'm publishing this on YouTube but if I see that there is enough interest and that I can actually deliver value to my audience by doing this then I'll eventually transfer this to a podcast platform. So if you feel that this format is suitable for you and if you're interested in this then do subscribe and hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. I started reading this book Ikigai, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life by Hector Garcia and Frances Mirales and I had the idea to make a mini-series on this. My intention with this series here is to talk about what it can do, what Ikigai can do for a more fulfilling career specifically. And it's not a summary or critique of the book, so if you listening right now are looking for a straightforward summary or review on this, then I'm sorry, but you're in the wrong place. If you're interested to know more about the book in detail, then I would recommend you to get it so you can get the whole scope. Picking up this book and looking at the table of contents, I think that I might not be able to find the specific answers to my question, which is mainly how to build a fulfilling and meaningful career. Because uh, Ikigai focuses more on the bigger picture, it's more holistic, it talks about life overall. But it doesn't really matter, I'm not one of those who complains about these things. Each time I pick up a book, my goal is never to find a complete answer. I'm never expecting that a book or a piece of writing can answer all my life's problems. It's even just to find one puzzle piece, one small gem of wisdom or even practical knowledge that I can then attach to the bigger picture that can help me to make sense of the world, including how I can have a more fulfilling and meaningful career. Before I started reading the book, the only thing I knew about Ikigai is that it's a Japanese philosophy or concept and had something to do with passion and purpose. And I vaguely remember the nice colorful diagram that popped up a lot in social media everywhere. And it looks so appealing, it does. And it instantly makes sense. So the diagram shows four areas and these are the areas of what you love, what you are good at, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs. And these four areas overlap again to form the categories of passion, profession, mission, and vocation. And a final overlap of everything results in Ikigai. So it's seemingly a simple concept, but it's not as easy to find in practice. As the author also said, it takes patience to find your Ikigai. Just try and ask people, you know, what do you love? What is it that you're passionate about? And not everyone will be able to give you a straightforward answer, right? Usually the answer is preceded by a lot of ums and uh, before some answer finally comes trickling out. And even then, people say it quite apologetically. For example, they say, oh, I, I love traveling, or um, I, I love reading, and so on. So I was intrigued about it, about this Ikigai concept, and I just wanted to find out more. 
So as I'm reading this book, I'll highlight some points that are central and share my thoughts with you on this. So I haven't read the whole book yet for full disclosure. What I'm going to do is that I'll go through it chapter by chapter and I'll talk about the things that I think are important and also relevant to the search and uh, the building of a fulfilling and meaningful career. And yeah, I'll, I'll let you know what I think about it. Ikigai, according to the author, roughly translates to the happiness of always being busy. And at the same time, it also stands for life to be worthwhile and also the reason for being. And I will not even try to define it conclusively in one definition because I have a strong feeling that ikigai is a word that is in a similar category as the word love, which is a word that is very difficult to define precisely. But everyone who experiences it or sees it in other people can agree that it exists. Japanese people who live by ikigai, especially Japanese living on the Japanese island of Okinawa, are known to live longer and are healthier. Apart from living by ikigai, it is also due to the diet and strong sense of community. There are, as always, a lot of factors involved. And there are actually five places in the world where people live longer and also have fewer diseases, which are also called the blue zones. These include Okinawa in Japan, Sardinia in Italy, Loma Linda in California, the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica, and Ikaria in Greece. And of course, it's difficult or impossible to know for sure uh, what the percentage is that Ikigai contributes to people living longer and healthier, but it seems to be uh, an important and decisive factor. So let's dig in further. If I combine this so far, I understand Ikigai to be a reason for being that keeps us busy and happy or the way in which to be busy and happy that can result in Ikigai. It seems to be very tightly connected to work and fulfillment. Knowing the reason for being and why we do the things that we do is something that I and many people ask themselves. And it's not specifically a Japanese thing because humans all over the world ask themselves these questions, right? Even in smaller things like, why didn't I get the job? Why didn't I get the promotion? Or why didn't I get accepted to a particular university and so on? People always want to know why. It gives them a peace of mind once they know the answer. And for me, a big question during my career was always, why should I go this path and why not the other? Why aim for A instead of B? I didn't want it to be just arbitrary or um, accidental, but I always wanted to have a compelling and strong reason to back my choice. And I know that this sounds like a first world problem, and it is. I mean, there are many people in countries, especially de developing countries, who are happy to have a, a job at all. Or, I mean, even nowadays during this pandemic situation, people are happy if they have any kind of job at all. And it is, it seems like a luxury to ask yourself this question. But I would say that life is long and there are still many things that can happen to your career. There are still many jobs that you will have in future. So it makes sense to ask yourself this question so that in future, given the opportunity, you can make better decisions. I made a happy choice to leave my job in banking to explore a career in the entertainment industry. And I emphasize the word explore here because I'm nowhere where I would ideally like to be at this moment, but I'm also still in the exploration phase. And I would say that this is one of the best decisions I made in my life. And there are about four or five of them, which I will share at some point in time. But it was not a straightforward and easy decision at all that move to quit my job, my well-paying job in banking and um, explore something new. And I think it isn't for most people. And the reason, now here we go with the reason for things, I started this channel was because I wanted to backtrack and dissect my career path in the past to be able to understand better where I'm going in the future. And I hope that by sharing this with you, um, you will also get some insights that can be beneficial for your own career. 
And it has much to do with all the things that Ikigai will explain, including passion, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for, etc. Um, and that is the reason why I became interested in Ikigai in the first place, because I wanted to I was interested to find out how these things are connected in a way that makes sense. I'm someone who finds it really hard to proceed with something if I don't see the bigger picture and find that it makes sense and things connect. I know some people don't need that at all, but I'm that type of person and perhaps you might be too. Find Your Ikigai opens the first chapter, implying that it is already there to be discovered. And I think that this is something that is really encouraging because this means that, um, as I said, it's already there. It's not something that you have to come up with. It is already there deep inside your heart or inside your soul, if you will, but it needs to be discovered and uncovered through a process that is not as easy. And the next page says, the art of staying young while growing old. And this totally piqued my interest, staying young while growing old. This is something that I always believed in and that I keep telling my parents and everyone, all the people I know um, that are older than me or who are constantly saying, I'm already old, I'm already old. Honestly, I, I just can't hear that phrase anymore. Anyways. Of course, you cannot fight biology. I mean, at least not yet. You will, everyone will physically grow older, but you can stay young at heart and in soul. One thing that also struck me was the line, whatever you do, don't retire. And indeed, I noticed, like the author said, that in the Western world, there is an emphasis on retiring or on the retirement phase, or rather um, a tendency to divide up life into two phases, two or three phases, into the working phase and retiring phase. Or like the author of The 100-Year Life, Linda Gretton and Andrew Scott said that traditionally people divided life into three stages of education, work, and retirement. There was this rigid separation between these three stages and they were done in chronological order. And more or less there was a certain time that people were expected to spend in each of these phases. But now, according to them, this has changed. Because of a longer life and many other things, it makes sense to have multiple stages within life that will allow us to flourish in all aspects of life. That a person can benefit from having a third, fourth, or even fifth career in their 60s, 70s, and beyond. And I see this message in Ikigai, which is whatever you do, don't retire, but taken even further. We often see retirement as a reward. After working for 40, 50 long years, then we are finally free and we can retire, yay. Do whatever we want, hopefully with enough savings and also pension funds. But here in Ikigai, it says don't retire. So it doesn't make that sharp separation between one working phase in the beginning and a retirement phase in the end. Of course, not retiring doesn't necessarily mean keeping the same um, 40, 50, or 60 hour a week, but it can mean various things. It's mainly about staying active, pursuing things of interest, uh, things that are of meaning and that are intentional rather than just hanging around. And in all fairness, this is not a specific Japanese thing. The concept Ikigai though describes this way of life rather beautifully. Everywhere in the world, there are people who do not strictly follow this working retirement phase model. And I'm sure that you know a lot of people who do this. And I do see many people within my family and also acquaintances who in their later years of 70 or 80 are still actively working. And they seem radiant, upbeat and happy. Of course, it's not the case for all. I do acknowledge that there are some or perhaps many people who work into their 70s and 80s simply because they have no choice and they have to work to make ends meet. Some have to work too hard at an old age and that can be too much. But then there are people who intentionally choose to continue working, perhaps at a far more relaxed pace, perhaps at a 20 to 30% energy level and reduced time. But the point is that they are still actively pursuing something rather than just, um, just relaxing. 
And this reminds me of my grandfather who was a goldsmith in Indonesia. Yes, a goldsmith. He already passed away, but I, I still remember him very fondly. He worked well into his 80s. He was just busy enough with that to keep him occupied every day, meeting people and pursuing goals. And I would say that he was rather happy with himself and with life. I also think of my father who is now 70 and still working as a university lecturer and uh, a book author recently. He is much more energetic and youthful than most of his peers and I believe that the reason is because he may remained active, especially mentally. I also think of my friend's mother who is around 75 and she's someone who's very active. She's very active at church and also meeting her friends and she looks as though she were only 55. And then I think of all those people who are in their 60s and 70s who have a support system around them that is perhaps too perfect and here I want to share a personal experience of having lived in Southeast Asia specifically in Indonesia for a long time where there are many people who are financially very well off in their 60s and 70s but um, who are so well off who have maids and cooks and drivers and also sons and daughters who practically do everything for them which is a very good thing but um, the downside of that is that it means that they rarely do anything by themselves and that actually leads to premature aging because they are not as physically and mentally active because everyone is taking care of their every single need. So that is why I think um, it's good if you have someone uh, who's older in your family to let them do some of the things that they need to do by themselves and not do everything for them. Anyways, I, I couldn't imagine how they, uh, my family members, would be like if they had retired 100% instead of still working on something at a 20 or 30% rate. They might not have stayed that youthful and that healthy for so long. In fact, I see many people around the world who at 65 already made the impression of an 80-year-old, weary, sad, and bored looking. So this must be right. There is something about this recommendation to never retire that is useful. Now, what does this mean for me personally? At this point, you might be wondering why I am talking about aging to an audience um, that is primarily in their 20s, 30s, or maybe early 40s. So stick with me and hear me out till the end. I definitely don't plan to work for a company full time when I'm 70, not even 60 or 50, but it gives me a different perspective on how to plan my life. Instead of aiming for full retirement at 65 or 55, I'd rather aim for a certain career at that age. And this means to think about what kind of work is it that I want to do when I'm 65 or 75, or what I want to be involved in. So it's no longer simply about how to retire as fast as possible and being able to do nothing at all at the age of um, 50 or 60, but rather um, how do I go about planning my life and my activities at different life stages? There are things that right now I'd like to do, but are not at the top of my priority list. For example, this sounds so mundane and silly, but I love rabbits. I'd love to breed fuzzy lobs or holland lobs. That would be so fun and so relaxing. And don't underestimate how much time that takes. It takes a lot of time to do that. And that is why it's just not a priority for me now. I just can't afford uh, to take the time to do that now. I'm not in that mental in, in that mental state of mind. It's something that I'd love to do, but not now. There are other things that I want to do that are much more important to me at this moment. But knowing that I don't intend to fully retire and do nothing anytime in my life, I have a peace of mind knowing that that thing will have its own time. There is something that I can look forward to. I don't need to rush and try to do all the things that I want to do at once. Neither do I have to choose just one thing to do for my entire life and feel like I've missed out. I see getting to 65 or 70 not necessary as an age where there's only decline. It's simply a gradual transition to another stage in life. 
for you listening right now, it is definitely a long time until you get to that age. And you might wonder why I, at this age and phase in my life, think of this and I think so far ahead into the future. And for you listening right now, it's also definitely going to be a long time until you get to that age. I guess it's because there was a time in my life where I felt extremely nervous and I felt that I was running out of time. I'm the type of person who has many different interests and perhaps you are like that too, but I knew that I had limited time and energy and I felt like I had to do all at once but in the end got to nowhere. But now I know better. Focus on one or two things at a time and schedule the rest for the next stage. If this is what you're looking for, content and insights that can help you to develop your career, then stay tuned for the next episodes and videos. Also feel free to drop your thoughts and questions below. Thank you so much for listening and I'll talk to you again soon.